Assalamu alaikum. So here we'll see how to debug your app using Block Observer. Now, Block Observer is a great class or a tool for your apps if you want to debug the app states and events. So if you're building your app using Block State Management, then this is the perfect tutorial for you and you should not miss that. So let's continue. Now, as I said that, Block Observer could be used for debugging. And this is what the developers want because otherwise sometimes you don't know what's happening in your app the states and events now to be able to use that go ahead and create a class you can name it actually anything it doesn't really matter and make sure that your app extends block observer okay and after that actually we can override few methods over here the first one is on event method then on transition method and then on change method and then of course we also have on error method if we have errors then we can get the errors as well yeah, among the most important are first two in a sense because well on event gets called right after an event is added in the event loop for block so whenever you add an event now what is adding an event so like here we are adding an event to our app blocks so once we add this event this on event method would get called and over here we'll see the type of event that's been added and this is great actually so you can print log actually with the type of events you are adding because you might have a lot of events in your app so it doesn't matter what kind of event is that as long as you add one an emit state then this method this method on event would get called and it would print the log and it will show you that what has been printed now I can show you right now so let's go ahead and restart our app. Of course, nothing happens here. As I click on this button over here, an event would be added, and then we'll see that we have log over here, and it would also mention the event name. So let's go ahead and add it. So we clicked over here, and of course we have some log. The logs from server that I'm getting data and printing, but the most important part is over here, as you can see. So here it says that app blocks and change tab. Now actually this is the event and this event actually resides in over here as you can see I have a class which is called change tab and this is the event name now this event is being registered over here inside this app blocks as you can see at the top I have this uh, registered event the event name is change tab and this is what being printed now this is being printed from here so now with this we know that when we trigger an event it gets printed all right and that's the first thing so on event lets you know what kind of event has been added after event has been added this gets triggered now let's take a look at this transition on transition method now on transition method gets called after adding the event and before updating any states of your app like for example over here as you can see that it shows app blocks transition well actually the log is coming from here and then here it says the current state app states true and it also shows you the event like what event has been triggered and at the same time what would be the next state of your app now over here our current current status is a true remember this on transition this gets called right after an event has been added in the event loop but also before making changes to our states so before our state has been updated it gets called and you can do whatever you want or necessary stuff or printing log of course it's great for debugging so over here it says that my current state is true and then the event is change tape and the next one is false now where is this coming from of course previously we have worked with our uh, in earlier tutorial we have seen the state class now in the state class we have a boolean now the default value is a true now this gets changed once we call this method because this method as you can see over here it changes the boolean and it toggles it and whatever the current value is it takes that and does the opposite so anyway earlier we have seen that this event gets called and internally this events actually call this one now this method and what this method does it toggles the value but we said early that on transition gets called before updating the state yes it did so over here our current state is a true which is coming from here as you can see our current state is a true right so it's also telling you what would be the next 
state so here the next state is false now of course this is great this is great because block observer can assume what would be the next state and this is great for debugging because based on that based on this information you can decide what to do what not to do for example we know that in our uh, block builder class we actually can keep track of the event so this is our block builder sorry in our main.dart class the block builder this one over here if we want we can actually check this state so we know that the next state would be false so over here we can actually do conditional check if if state equal false then do blah 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 do something else something different you want now since this is predictable because it can predict what would be the next state so that's why it is great because it gives you more control on your UI or what to do or what events to add next time all right now back to this one so on transition now over here we also have on change method the on change and on transition pretty much they're the same thing but once again they they both get called before updating any state as you can see over here so this printed before updating the state because right now over here if I check the state that should be false okay so they got called before making any changes then what's the difference between these two well from on transition actually you can also print your event so over here as you can see it it tells you the events that what event is getting called what event is getting triggered and based on that event what would be your next state so that's cool but on change this one over here it doesn't do that it just tells you that what is the current state and what is the next state but it doesn't tell you which event would cause the next state okay so that's how there is the big difference between this on transition and on change it tells you what event would make it false but on change it doesn't tell you but both of them have uh, both of them are consist of current state and next state and on transition has another event or object which is called event okay so it it prints what is going to trigger this change for the next state all right so with this we have much better understanding that how this block observer is useful for our app development now of course this is just a simple class all you need to do get this code and just create it separate dart file and put the whole code there now you can get this code from the link below but well after getting this code actually we need to connect this code with our app now to be able to do that you need to come at the top over here in your main dart file and for your main function so inside the main function you have to wrap your run app using this block overrides dot run zoned and over here in the property where there is a block observer you have to say my global observer of course this is the class name the class that we have defined over here okay it, you can name it anything it doesn't really matter all you need to do call the class and do the binding and then your app would be reactive to any kind of added events or a change state or things like that now all you need to do after doing this you need to restart your app and you should be good to go and well if you have a lot of states and events it doesn't matter it would work the same so create a separated global file and just call that class from your main function and you're good to go